The CEO of Google tells us the truth about how AI will affect coding and coding jobs. And I really appreciate Sundar giving us the straight up truth. This is the Lex Friedman podcast. I've got, I'll put a jump link directly to this point in the description below so you can watch the whole thing. I think it's a really good podcast, but I think there's just a lot of nonsense on this front and he gets straight to the point and talks about the practical reality of it. And let's get into it. Programming front, uh, AI is getting really good at programming. Gemini, both the Agentic and just the LLM has been incredible. So a lot of programmers are really worried that their jobs, they will lose their jobs. Uh, how worried should they be? And how should they adjust so they can be thriving in this new world where more and more code is written by AI? I think a few things, looking at Google, you know, we've given various stats around like, you know, 30% of uh, code now uses like AI generated suggestions or whatever it is, but the most important. So a lot of people take that 30% and go, oh, we'll need 30% less AI engineers, but that's the wrong way to look at it. So let's move forward. Metric and we carefully measured is like, how much has our engineering velocity increased as a company? due to AI, right? And it's like tough to measure and we kind of rigorously try to measure it. And our estimates are at that number is now at 10%, right? Like another erroneous thing would be to assume then they, does that mean they need 10% less engineers? No, and he's gonna answer that in a second. Now across the company, we've accomplished a 10% engineering velocity increase using AI, but we plan to hire engineers, more engineers next year, right? So there you go. Yeah, they're planning on hiring more engineers. This is what I've been saying for quite some time. And some people think it's copium. It's not copium, it's practical reality. Let him explain it, his part, and then I'll add on to it. You, because the opportunity space of what we can do is expanding too, right? Mm -hmm. And so there we go. Their ability to do more things increases so the value of the engineering work per let's say good engineer goes up and therefore the opportunity and the and the amount of let's say market value they can capture goes up as well it's a very incorrect and bounded way of thinking to think well 10 percent more with ai therefore you need 10 percent engineers no it just means that they can do more especially with software software is almost limitless and what it's capable of doing, how much value it can add. It's we're only limited really by our creativity and our time and our attention to actually push more software forward. So I think this again, this is one he's one of the few people telling the truth on this. If you look at Anthropic, the Anthropic CEO and Sam Altman, the OpenAI CEO, they're trying to promote their model companies are trying to promote their models being all that and a bag of chips and it's gonna do all the things. And so they have to align with that, which means, oh, well, you're not gonna need coders anymore. They're gonna just gonna do all the coding. No, it is a collaborative process. If you do humans alone versus AI alone, it will always be better to have them enmeshed appropriately within good systems. That's going to be true for a very long time, if not for our entire lives. I've been saying the same thing for a while in, in different forms. And so our ability to do more as coders with using AI as a tool, it makes us more valuable. It makes it so that we can do more things and therefore it makes more financial sense to hire more engineers, not less. He goes a little bit deeper into it here. And I've explained this in multiple other ones, but you know, don't, don't believe me, I, who, who am I? I'm, I'm nobody, he's the CEO of Google. I think hopefully, you know, for, uh, at least in the near to midterm, for many engineers, it frees up more and more of the, uh, you know, even in engineering and coding, there are aspects which are so much fun. You're designing, you're architecting, you're solving a problem. There's a lot of grunt work, you know, which all goes hand in hand, but it hopefully it takes a lot of that away, makes it even more fun to code, frees you up more time to create, problem solve, brainstorm with your fellow colleagues and so on, right? So that's, that's the opportunity there. And second, I think like, you know, it'll attract, uh, it'll put the creative power in more people's hands, which means people will create more. That means there'll be more engineers doing more things. So 
There's kind of two parts to what he says here. One part I agree with, one part I don't really agree with. So if it puts the creative power in more engineers' hands, it enables engineers to do more things to kind of touch more areas, I would agree with that in general. I don't agree with this idea that everybody's a programmer now and anybody who doesn't know any program can just go into one of these AI coding tools uh, or no code tools and just build the same thing on the same quality with the same value that somebody who doesn't have coding. I think that's absolute nonsense. I think you don't know what you don't know and you don't know how to ask the right questions. You don't know what to look for. You create very insecure things as we've seen with other examples online of people vibe coding things that, that kind of blow up in their face. You know, a lot of coding actually is not in the initial phase. It's in the fixing and tuning things as they go on. And you can't really do that if you don't understand the code. AI fails to do a lot. There's a lot of times where it's confidently tries to fix the wrong bug. That's not really the bug that's creating the issue. That happens all the time. And so you, you need a certain amount of coding understanding. So if he's saying that, then I don't think I don't agree with him. But I do agree that it does free up more time for the more creative stuff and some of the more grunt boilerplate code that maybe you would have to write over and over and over again. You can write that pretty quickly with AI it helps with that. So it's tough to fully predict. But, you know, I, I think in general, in this moment, it feels like, you know, you know, people uh, adopt these tools and be better programmers. There are more people playing chess now than ever before, right? So that is a very good point. It wasn't even really AI. I guess it was some version of computer algorithms that beats humans at chess. But did that mean that nobody ever played chess again? No, as he pointed out, more people are playing chess. It's more popular now than ever. So I still think there will be a lot of things that humans can add to add value to, to make it unique, but that also can get value out, out of by doing it themselves. So, uh, you know, it feels positive that way to me, at least speaking from within a Google context, uh, is how I would, you know, talk to them about it. I and he, you know, Google's a really big company that employs who knows how many engineers, well, it's tens of thousands, I think. It's not an exact representation of software development in space, but it's a pretty big representation. So this would be pretty generalized advice and expectations for what's going on in the market right now. Still, I just know anecdotally, a lot of great programmers are generating a lot of code. Yeah. So their productivity, they're not always using all the code, just, you know, it's, there's still a lot of editing, but like, even for me, I'm just still programming as a side thing. I think I'm like five X more productive. I don't, I, I think that's, uh, even for a large code base that's touching a lot of users like Google's does, I'm imagining like very soon that productivity should be going up even no, more. It, the big unlock will be as we make the agentic capabilities much more robust, right? I think that's what unlocks that next big wave. I think the 10% is like a massive. Yeah, 10% is a massive number. I'm not sure I agree with the agentic. I think the agentic thing has been a big issue for quite some time and a lot of hot air on agents. I think the models are probably not there, especially to be kind of like turned loose and run on a loop. And it might be years, decades before that is is really even a practical thing for us to do. The number like, you know, if tomorrow, like I showed up and said like, yeah, you can improve like a large organization's productivity by 10% when you have tens of thousands of engineers, that's a phenomenal number. Uh, and, you know, that's different than what others cite as statistics saying like, you know, like this percentage of code is now written by AI. I'm talking more about like overall actual uh, productivity, uh, actual productivity, right? Engineering productivity, which is two different things and uh, which is the more important uh, metric. And but I think it'll get better. Right. And like, you know, uh, I think there's no engineer who tomorrow, if you magically became 2x more productive, just going to create more things. You're going to create more value added things. And so I think they, you'll, you'll find more satisfaction in your job, right? So, and there's a lot of aspects. I mean, the actual Google code base might just improve because it'll become more standardized, more, um, easier for people to move about the code base because AI will help with that. And therefore that will not sure. I completely agree with that. I think that AI writes right now, mostly mediocre code and sometimes bad code. It's a little bit of a random distribution. And so there is the AI slop. So I think that the generation of more code, Primogen has a really good viewpoint on this. Code is actually a liability. So generation of more code is generating more liability, not less. 
And so it's uh, creating just as many problems as it's solving, if not more. And so this isn't necessarily a good thing, but you know, if he's going by overall productivity, then this should be accounted for in that metric. But just making more code and saying, hey, well, if they use AI more, does that make the code better? The code base more improved, more standardized? I actually don't think that's the case. You'd have to have a very particular AI model or AI powered system for it to make it more standardized. I will also allow the AI to understand the entire code base better, which makes the engineering aspect. That's what I've been using cursor a lot yeah. uh, as, as a way to program with Gemini and other models. It's like it, one of its powerful things is it's aware of the entire code base. And that allows you to ask questions of it. It allows the agents to move about that code base in a really powerful way. I mean, that's a huge unlock. Think about like, kind of hand wavy there, what he's talking about with AI. I'm not sure there's a lot of evidence to support that that's imminent. You know, migrations, refactoring old coal bases. Refactoring, yeah. Yeah, I mean, th think about like, you know, once we can do all this in a much better, more robust way than where we are today. Oh, there we go. There's the qualification. It's not there yet. We can't do that today. That's what he's saying. But once we can, which is a month, a year, a decade, more away, I think in the end, everything will be written in JavaScript and run, run in Chrome. <laughs> I think it's all going to that uh, direction. I mean, just for fun, Google has legendary code, coding interviews, uh, like rigorous interviews for the engineers. How, can you comment on how that has changed in the era of AI? <laughs> it's just such a weird, uh, you know, the whiteboard interview, I, I assume is not allowed to have some prompts. Such a, a good question. Look, I do think, you know, we're making sure, you know, we'll, we'll introduce at least one round of in-person interviews for people <laughs> yeah. just to make sure the fundamentals are there. I think they'll end up being important. He said at another part in this uh, interview, first principles, and now he talks about fundamentals, and he's going to comment here in a second about computer science. Those are really important, and I think that is going to be extremely valuable. I think that is ultimately what is valuable in any discipline, understanding the most fundamental, most core principles. But it's an equally important skill. Look, if you can use these tools to generate better code, uh, like, you know, I think I think that's an asset. And so, uh, you know, I think, uh, so overall, I think it's a, it's a massive positive. Vibe coding engineer, uh, do you recommend uh, people People, uh, students interested in programming still get an education uh, in computer science, in college education? What do you think? I do. If you have a passion for computer science, I would. You know, computer science is obviously a lot more than programming alone. So I would. I still don't think I would change what you pursue. I think AI will horizontally allow impact every field. It's pretty tough to predict in what base. So any education in which you're learning good first principles thinking, I think is good education. You've revolutionized web browsing. You've re okay, so I would put that as an emphatic yes. Again, Sundar, thank you for speaking truth. Him and Zuckerberg are the only ones. There's so many people out there saying, these are less the engineering people and more the people trying to sell something directly and more the salesy CEOs who are trying to raise funds or pump up the value of their company. I think it's consistently that when they say, oh, you don't learn computer science, you don't need to learn that anymore. That's gonna be a skill of the past. Absolute freaking nonsense. I would put it this way. Your skill set and understanding how computers work when computers are taking over more and more and more of the economy, that can't be bad and it can only be good. Even if to some extent there's some of that that becomes less useful or less important because it's systematized out, your understanding of that will increase your ability to do things in other areas, other related areas. And I think this is great advice that he put, don't change what you would already pursue. Anything that we're, that learns fundamental principles, it's like foundation, it's a foundation that you build off of. If you get those right, then lots of other things become easier, more, more effective in the future. So. Learning to code, I think, is still one of the most valuable skill sets, even if you're not a coder. Just your ability to understand how computers work. And I remember when I first learned to code, I saw all technology pretty much differently. 
all like computer technology. And I realized how things worked and that enabled me to interact with it in a better way, even if I'm not coding. And so I think that this, I, this is just terrible idea to not learn to code. It is just awful. Go learn to code. It's hard. It's, it's challenging. It requires you to think in a way that is pretty different than how most people think and more, more natural uh, way of thinking. It'll pay you back, even if it takes you years to, to learn. Some people it's easier than others. That's okay. Some people, they have to struggle through certain concepts while others don't. That's okay. You just get there and, and learn and, and, and go for it. There will be value that you can add because of that. And he put it really well. You're gonna have more engineers, more demand for more engineers because there's, they're gonna be able to do that much more. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with Sundar? Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.